This week we'll continue our exploration of X-Array by building some data arrays and some data sets from scratch so we can really understand the nuts and bolts of how they work. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to keep working on X-Array and build some of these fundamental objects from scratch so we can get a little bit better understanding of how they work. And we're going to start out with a pretty simple example. We're going to have some X and Y coordinates and some temperatures and humidities. Now, admittedly, this is a relatively simple problem. But when we start adding more variables in, like time or levels, we'll see how this can get a little bit more useful. So let's start off by importing x-ray as xr and import numpy as mp. <clears throat> now we're also going to need some fake data to work with. So here I'm going to create an x and a y array. And this is going to be some sort of gridded data set. Now again, we're not really going to get to see all of the power of X-Array until we start adding things like time dimensions on top of this. But there's our X. Notice these are two-dimensional arrays. As if we did have a, a grid of them from a model output, say. There's our Y's. And for temperatures, you can make some up. You can use ones. Uh, you can use random. I'm just going to go ahead and put some fake temperature values in for us, though. There's our first row. I'm going to put a little bit hotter temperature there in the center of our grid. And we had a, a heat burst or something in our little 12 element model. And then some humidities. And we'll make these relative humidities in percent. So we'll make it relatively humid, except where the heat burst happened. We'll make that a little bit lower humidity. All right, so there we've got our fake data. This is a good time to remind ourselves that what is the temperature shape, or really the shape of any of these? Well, it's 3, 4. In the zeroth dimension, there are three elements. And then in the oneth dimension, we have four elements. So three rows, four columns, if you want to think of rows and columns in this simple 2D sense. So I'm going to create a data array for humidity. So x-ray dot data array. Our humidity values. And I'm going to give it some dimensions. They're going to be string, y, and x, because that is the order that these are in. Row, column. And now let's take a look at that. So we see we've got a data array, three, Four, there's our data, no coordinates, no attributes. So probably not a very useful data array. Let's take that same line, and instead of specifying dimensions, let's put some coordinates on. You can specify coordinates uh, a number of ways, but here I'm going to use our y, and our x, notice I'm indexing into them because I only need one row or one column, if you will. We don't need the whole grid. All right, so now we have two dimensions, 
Because remember, we put coordinates in, but we didn't give it any dimensions, so it has named them dim0 and dim1 creatively for us. And those are the coordinates. And there's our data. So a little bit more useful, a little bit more progress, but still not something that we're going to be working with on a daily basis. So finally, let's do a little bit of a modification of this and do both. So I'm going to specify the coordinates and the dimensions by combining our previous two examples. And now we have something relatively useful. We have these labeled, so we've put dimension labels on our coordinates here. There's our data. And now all we need to do is fill out some metadata because metadata is very important. So for our humidity data array, I'm going to set the name attribute to be relative humidity. And I am going to, in the adders, using a dictionary-like notation, set the units to be percent. Now if we look at our humidity data array again, we see our name and our attribute units percent. So this is a well-formed and useful X-Array data array. Now what I'd like you to do is pause the video and do the same thing for temperature. So take a moment to do that and get a little bit of practice because you'll see that some of the error messages when you forget things or do things in the wrong order may not be exactly what you're expecting. All right. So here's my solution, my temperature data array, x-ray data array, our temperature data, the coordinates are our slice into our y array, and our slice into our x-ray, the dimensions are y and x. I hope you remembered metadata, air temperature, and of course units, our favorite friend and foe in scientific computing. And these units are going to be degrees Celsius. So if we look at our temperature data array, there we go, everything looks pretty well formed. So now, what about taking multiple data arrays and combining them into a larger data structure? We talked about it last week, and it's the X-Array data set, which is something that mirrors a NetCDF file, though there are some fundamental differences. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use the data set constructor, which is going to take a dictionary and that dictionary is going to have the name of the variable that we're going to create. And the value to that variable key is going to be a tuple. And that tuple is going to have our dimensions and our data that are associated with it. And then we'll put the coordinates finally in the dataset constructor. So let's put all of those words and jargon terminology into motion here by creating a data set. The first thing is going to be a dictionary. The key is our variable name. The value, in this case, I'm going to make it a tuple, in which the first thing is a list of my coordinates. And the second is my data array that I've created. We'll do the same for relative humidity. y, there's x, and then our humidity data array. All right, the last thing I said was coordinates. Just like when we create the data array, I'm going to specify coordinates for our data set. I'm going to use the dictionary notation here as well. Again, like pandas, you can use several different notations. I'm trying to show a couple of 
different notations as we go along. And now we've created a data set. Here's our data set. Dimensions, coordinates, our data variables, and we don't have any attributes. So finally, I'm going to do something like set a title to be my model output. And now we've added an attribute. So I hope that now you've got a little bit better understanding of how variables, coordinates, and dimensions, and even attributes can all work together in X-Ray to create data arrays and data sets. If you're having any trouble with this, I encourage you to play with it because next week we're going to add some more complexity by truly going multidimensional and adding things like times or heights to these data to make it even more complicated and something that would be very non-trivial to handle in really any other way. I hope that you found this useful and that you're enjoying this series on X-Ray. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.